two, one. Uh, welcome to the European Docs Office Hours for Jenkins. Uh, this is the August 4th edition. Uh, and we have quite a few items on our agenda for today. Uh, first, we'll have some action items that Mark will just give us a brief update on. Uh, we'll have a discussion about um, the, there's been some updates to the page look and feel for Jenkins. We'll discuss that uh, and some of the uh, other uh, discussions that have come up since it being merged. Uh, if Vihan is here, he'll be able to give us a, yep, which he is, can give us a uh, quick update on Google Summer Code and where things are at uh, on the latest uh, issue that he's got. Uh, we have uh, a new Blue Ocean status message that was added to the Blue Ocean docs pages. Uh, this is to reset expectations and align with the current uh, and future for Blue Ocean. Um, We've got a, an item for discussing the search improvements for Jenkins.io. Uh, the next baseline uh, selection. Uh, the commercial support page that Gavin's proposed and we've started talking about previously. Uh, the fact that changelog entries can come from multiple repositories. We have the Jenkins 2.346.3 changelog and upgrade guide uh, with the release coming out on August 10th, tentatively. So uh, that's in progress. And then uh, just some tooling updates for Java 11, as that will be the requirement uh, with the September LTS and is the weekly requirement now. Uh, so uh, is there anything else that we need to add to the agenda or any items that uh, we want to make sure are discussed as well? Nothing else from me, Vihan. I assume you're okay talking about your project. Oh yes, definitely. Excellent. Great. Okay, uh, then Mark, if you want to start us off, and uh, if you have any in, any um, info for the uh, action items there. Yeah, so I still have to hang my head in shame. No progress on any of the action items. Although I take it back, I have started writing the blog post on Shecode Africa Contributhon, and it will probably be done today and submitted. So, nice. so I, I guess I have started some action. It's just no, nothing visible yet. So okay. keep your eyes open for pull request review later today. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, so then uh, to start us off, uh, Vihan, would you like to share uh, what you've been up to on the Google Summer of Code? Yes, yeah, sure. So uh, last week, the uh, pull request for the deprecated level was more label was merged. So that was the first task after the midterm evaluation. And now the big task is to reduce the content on the pipeline at a step documentation. Mm -hmm. um, so we, I have been looking into some approaches for that. And I put a ticket on the group, uh, on the chat channel. And in that I've mentioned some of the things that I've tried. And mm -hmm. I have noticed that um, making changes in the two ASCII doc, the ASCII doc generation Java class. Uh, is actually uh, much harder than making changes to the ASCII docs that we have that are generated from the class. So I am looking at making uh, something like a post-processing system rather than a pre-processing system because uh, those functions are recursively calling each other and getting the depth of the nested choice of objects becomes quite hard to track. So I'm basically, I'm visualizing uh, the documentation like a tree. And uh, so each parameter would represent the root node. And inside we have the nested choice, which would be uh, the following nodes. And the very end, the last parameters would be like the leaves. And we just want to find the depth of these so that we can uh, maybe separate out the deeper parts of the tree onto a newer page. Uh, but that was becoming quite hard to track since as I, as I said, the two functions were calling each other recursively and the depth was, it, it was, I tried some algorithm but the depth was coming out to be wrong. So then I thought that it would be easier to work on strings rather than working on iterating Java objects. Because if we have a uh, ASCII doc, we'll just do a file reader on that. And once we have the string array of the lines, uh, we can maybe uh, read for the tags. So for example, we see an entire tag is between some li tags. And even in between them, if we have li tags, uh, we know that uh, the uh, root will be closed if we are able to find the equal number of closing tags as well. So basically just like a opening, closing, brace, math, math sequence. So we, uh, we know that it is completed, then we have the equal number of closing braces. 
so that is giving me some good results so i can probably share my screen and show uh, some of the results that i got from that yeah uh, go ahead john i just stop sharing my screen so you can take over sure right away so sharing now uh, is it visible uh, yes it is okay great so i basically wrote a, a processing class for it the process ascii doc it's not doing much right now. It's maybe just for some research things. I've added some code uh, to see. So as you can see, I'm measuring these uh, number of lines that are encapsulated within one single nested choice of objects for different ASCII docs. And these are all the ASCII docs that are on the documentation page. So I downloaded one of the all ASCII.zip file and unzipped over here. So I will show you some interesting results that I saw. So for example, the workflow multi-branch in that the nested choice of objects, which is present, it has 146,000 lines. Um, and similarly, if we uh, scroll for different things, uh, and this is not the worst thing, trust me. <laughs> so, uh, like uh, workflow SCM is by far the largest page that we have. Even the ticket I mentioned, the size in MBs, it was around four and a half MBs, which is quite a lot for an ASCII doc. <laughs> and once we uh, run the JavaScript on that page, uh, the page basically hangs. So for me, whenever I try to click on that page, I at it, it, it at least takes around two minutes for that page to load. So uh, yeah, this is it. And um, the next thing that I found very surprising was the amount of redundancies that were present in the ASCII doc. So I have one example for you right now. Um, so the uh, git SCM uh, parameter, uh, the choice, is actually present at uh, 10 different places in the documentation. So for example, uh, we have two occurrences of the exact same block of git SCM. This might contain thousands of lines. So basically, I am talking about the, uh, just for reference, I'll show you what it looks on the front end side so that we know how much content is getting repeated the documentation. This new navbar looks great, by the way. The only problem for me on my machine is a lot of content is getting clipped from the top. So I have to uh, like zoom out to see the uh, upper part. My I'm using a 14 inch uh, laptop. So maybe we can rectify that in the future updates. Um, yeah, so basically all content within this Git SCM. So this has many more nestings within itself. So as you can see, all of these. So this, uh, it would be fair to assume it would have around a thousand lines of ASCII doc within itself. And this is getting repeated. The exact same content is repeated twice in jira.adoc and four times in pipeline uh, uh, doc. The exact same content, as you can see, it's not changing. Nothing is changing. So this has this is basically present at 10 different places. So my goal would be to separate all the SCM providers and um, localize them to a different URL altogether. And once that is done, uh, we, all these places would simply contain the hyperlink to that page. And instead of showing the entire, doc uh, containing the entire documentation at every local position, they will just point on to their new page, which, which would be present in the uh, like ASCII docs, which are on the website. So maybe inside a folder, SCM would be the folder and inside that, We'll have Git, Bitbucket, uh, CVS, etc., and all these places would would simply have the hyperlinks to that page, and in that way we'll be able to uh, get it done. So yeah, um, so these were some things that I noticed, and now I'm working on uh, enhancing the processing part, and let's see how it goes along. So Vihan, uh, actually, we may want you to continue sharing. I. I had some questions. Oh, okay. Are you okay if I ask you some questions? Sure, sure, please. Okay, so so and it's sort of maybe let's take this one first. It's the closest. Then I've got a question even back to the deprecated. So so this one, mm -hmm. you I think what you were showing was the Jira plugin uh, that had that mm -hmm. duplicated content inside of it. Is that correct? Right. And uh, yet when I look on the the Jira plugins page on jenkins.io for the pipeline steps i don't see where that might be visible have you been able to find is this just oh. inadvertently embedding something that then is completely hidden or maybe maybe if you can show I me some more present in one of the collapsible lists uh, let, let me just share my entire screen screen and okay. all right uh, we'll, we'll find it together <laughs> it well and I, I wonder if i'm looking at a different plugin than you are go ahead uh okay 
Okay, so I think there's a Zoom update. So now we can hold control to select multiple windows. That's pretty cool. Okay, so let's search for it together. Mm -hmm. Is it this one? So we have for Jira. We have Jira steps and Jira. So we want to look into Jira. Okay, this one. All right. Okay, so you're yeah, looking no, at the same one I was looking in, but I did not see in my attempt to expand things, I didn't see that text. Now I haven't looked at the page source. Okay, so this looks interesting. What we can try is um, I can run this locally and maybe disable the JavaScript, but there's not, there's not a lot of content on this page. Let me see and it, what the title of the is. Well, or or let's yeah. grab a keyword from it. So it was okay. It it was. It says it's Jira plugin. Choose some. Keep scrolling downward. And let's choose some non. Okay, so Jira issue selector. Jira issue okay. selector. We are looking at this here. And let's see which step contains yeah, that git SEO part. There it is, yeah. KBDB server instance. Mm. Okay. Genix Genix US Server SCM. This is the main class under which we have to look for. Yeah, and branch pattern. Uh, must be one more level to dig. Yeah, it's okay. it's as though it embedded. Um. I, okay, so. And maybe it's maybe it's just something for you to investigate separately because that that embedding looks disastrous, and yet I don't see it on the page. And when I look at the size of the web page and its source, it's it doesn't look, at least to me, like it's like it's huge. And I would have expected, based on what you were seeing, for that page to be absolutely huge. Mm -hmm. Huh. Uh, is that okay. a, how you check the web page size? Uh, All I did was end? do a right click on the page and view page source and then look at the size of the scroll bar. That's that's oh, okay. not a terribly okay. that's not a very analytic method, but but it was, hey, that scroll bar is not huge. Oh, okay. So yeah, there's something to investigate here. That's pretty cool. But like I was able to find the location on the pipeline groovy and the work workflow multi branch. So definitely. Oh, good. Okay, let's look so, at those. So maybe I can show you for the pipeline groovy. Um, let's because that I know exactly where it uh, is. Mm, okay, even this page takes a while to load. It's not actually the content in MDs; it's the JavaScript that has to work hard, iterate, and then collapse the sections. Okay, okay, so we're done. So we have here modern CM and uh, in this uh, legacy and here it is. So the entire same thing as checkout. So we have the uh, name, branch, branches name, browser, everything is the same. Right, so, right. And 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 that, I, I, I think I see your point there. And, and that absolutely is, is expected based on the current structure and certainly bloats the page right because what it lists is mm -hmm. every known modern scm implementation and and therefore and and it's right inside the page content you're correct it's because it's a static page good thank you good good detection so basically all these are coming like a bit, we have bit keeper on the checkout as well so all these are uh, basically the, there is a lot of repetition so what I'm proposing is uh, for each one of them, this collapsible section would turn into a clickable link. 
and we'll have one single page for Git SCM, one for Harvest. And that way, I guess it would be easier for the user to identify as well. On that page, we, we can maybe help them in identifying which plugin that particular class is coming from. So now it's very hard for them to know, okay, from, from after which plugin am I able to choose this as a class? So that is what Christian was also looking for. So this is also one big improvement that, yeah, um, we, want, we want to implement. Uh, was there I anything like else? That. Yes. No, that's that's great. Thank you. I like that very much. So that that covered that topic. Then if we could rewind back one topic, if you're okay, that would be with yeah, the sure. deprecated. So you mentioned that deprecated has been has been deployed, but could you show us the the page and let's talk about how deprecated is presented to the user? Okay, so this was the example that I think was in the ticket, SCM, HTTP client. And uh, so once we go into that, we are able to see the deprecated uh, label next to the plugin now. Okay, okay. So the the fact that, that for instance, the GitHub plug, oh, okay. I was trying to understand why Artifact Z did not have, but in this case, that's the case of Artifact Z. It's not a deprecated plugin, it's a deprecated part of the documentation that's in the plugin. And so the word deprecated appear. You, what you're showing me is, in fact, SCM HTTP client is deprecated and it correctly shows that it's a deprecated plugin there. Mm -hmm. And if I open the plugin site, it shows it's deprecated as well. Good, I understand, okay. thank you. Thanks for helping me on that. I had just failed to understand. Sure, and like, uh, so for the steps that have the word deprecated, it's not added by me. It's by default the name, uh, it's coming with the step. Right, and and, and that's also, also something oh, that go go, sure. go back one. So I wanted to double check yeah. one more. So back to your search for deprecated. Okay. And the Dynatrace application monitoring plugin, that one. Okay, let's see. And it is deprecated. Okay, good. So, and that one on the plugin site says coming soon. Okay. Deprecated. Also deprecated. Good. Okay, great. <laughs> so, so that's the piece I needed. Thanks for the clarity. Sure. And I think there's the current build of the documentation after the one after the deprecated one. So, in which I didn't make any changes has messed up the plugin names slightly. So the uh, some of the names are missing. So for example, checkout is no longer coming in the pipe and SCM step. It's getting fed into code. And like code, code is getting crowded by all these things like Zulip also. It's not able to find the plugin name. And basically this happens when uh, there's a method known as get plugin name for descriptor. And once it, it is not able to find the name, it sends all of them to code. And it's not supposed to happen like this because earlier we just have had a couple of steps in code and others were in their respective plugins. So this may be, I'm not sure why this has occurred. I've also noted this to Kristen in the office arts. And uh, maybe we can do a force build on the, uh, for this repository and let's see if the new one is better. And if it's not, then we can investigate. Yeah, I am, I am happy to. So thank you for noting this one. Would you mind putting an issue report into the Jenkins.io GitHub issues to note this problem? Because I think we want to get this one fixed quickly. Right. Okay. I, I'll do that. I'll create an issue and I'll probably. Thank you. And, and I will. By... Let me, I'm making myself a note to run the, run the doc generator job. It runs, is it, does it run weekly, daily? I don't remember how often it runs. Uh, I think the Quran is weekly. Okay. okay. Not sure, but of course, I, as far as I can remember, oh. it's weekly. Okay. So if it's weekly and it hasn't run since 2.362, then it may have been affected by a bug we detected in 2.361. We fixed it in 362. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so this may it may be as simple as run the generator again now that 362 is available and watch it work. Kevin, would you be willing to put a note in the in the in the meeting notes and give me an action item that run the doc generator again? Thanks for thanks for showing this, Vihan. You've once again shown something very, very helpful. 
that I wasn't aware. And I think if if it's not fixed magically by by running it again, i.e., by having had got mm-hmm. the bug fix in three two dot three sixty two, then we we probably need you to take some deep dive to understand what's changed, what broke it. Sure. Sure. All right. So do you still want me to create the GitHub issue for that? Or do we want to test the uh, rerun, rebuilding once again? Good. You know what? Let me just run it. And if it fails, I'll create the ticket. That way, that way we know we know the result and the result is represented exactly in the in the ticket. If it if we didn't need it, a GitHub issue for it, it'll just be fixed and there'd be no value to the, the GitHub issue. So let me create the sure. issue if I see a problem. Sure. And please tag me on that and I'll be on it if it's not fixed. Will do. Thank you. All right, then I guess this was it from my side, Karen. Um, yeah, you, you can take it forward from you. Okay, great. Thanks, Vahan. Really appreciate it. And, and just to reiterate, that looks amazing. Really appreciate what you're uh, doing and investigating and working on with the Jenkins project. Like, this is all very amazing and helpful. So, yeah, thank you. Much appreciate it. Cool. All right. Uh, so, and uh, uh, just to uh, touch base on the look and feel page improvements. Um, so this was something that was submitted recently uh, within the last month by a contributor. And frankly, the page, I think it looks great, uh, but there have been some challenges as far as the font being updated goes and uh, just other small things, but nothing too major. However, the, the font really needs to be what uh, it's already been updated to. Uh, so while this, Ticket has been merged. Uh, we do have uh, a revert ticket open as well. Uh, in addition to the submitter contributor themselves also having uh, an updated issue where they've corrected the fonts. Um, so this is something that's been happening over the last couple of days, uh, and just wanted to bring it to the community to discuss how um, how does the how do the improvements look? How how does the page feel now? Um, is there anything else that anyone might notice or pick up on as we're, as they're reviewing it, reviewing it? Um, you know, these are all things that we want to capture here. So, yeah. So uh, my, my question here was, I, I appreciate Daniel's comment visible on the screen. Now, can we just revert this already? I'm not really ready to revert it because my personal preference is keep it and go forward, try to resolve his concerns rather than revert it and try to do them again. Uh, I feel like it's it's a, a generally positive improvement. We had Gavin Mogan's involvement, and Gavin has been willing to adapt the pi- the plugin site to handle it as well. Mm-hmm. And and so I'm I'm I wanted to hear other people's opinions. Shall we go forward, or shall we take Daniel's Daniel's recommendation and go back and try again in a series of smaller steps? So I'm, I'm going to ask each. So Ke- Bruno, your your opinion. Vihan, your opinion, and then Kevin. Oh uh, well, I would say go forward, uh, but I don't know if that's easier <laughs> or more difficult than to revert. And but yeah, go forward. I would prefer. Um, yeah. So Vihan, your your perception. Um, could I see the issue that was like the created and because of which we want to revert it? Maybe if that is open, I don't have a link to it. Uh, five three three four, is it? Uh, yes, it is five three three four. Um, which has been this one has been closed. This one specifically. Um, this is the newest version of uh, Daniel's comments and and um, pull requests essentially uh, here. Oh, okay. So uh, for so me, it's the only change, uh, as I mentioned, like the the problem with me was the navbar overflowing onto and clipping my content, and but I think it is fixable. So, uh, and the new new look new page looks nice. So I would say we can go ahead with this. Great. Right. Uh, and I uh, have already voiced my enjoyment of the page itself. I like the background, the font, the color updates. Uh, 
the blue is a little bit warmer and a little less abrasive on the eyes. Uh, I think it flows really nicely. And uh, like Mark said, the Gavin's gone ahead and already updated the plugins page to match. Um, so this work is being done. It's already been done. Uh, and I think it would be really valuable to keep this and move forward and update as we go. Uh, innovation is the name of the game. And uh, I would love to just see us uh, you know, move forward and, and iterate on that. Okay. So Kevin, could you help me with one more tour item? Let's go yeah. back to the, the, the documentation or back to the notes for the meeting. Okay. I think there's a link to the new pull request that's to, to repair it. Yeah. So that yeah. bullet that says new, okay, this one, could you look at the preview here? Yeah. I wanted to see if the rest of us see, okay, is the font improved, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay, now my eyes don't, see, well, I guess there's a difference there, right? So let's see, could you put them side by side somehow? Is there a way for me to see them both together? Uh, yes. Uh, da, 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 da. So. Um, okay, the, the yeah. font does look bigger on the on the one you were at before and now smaller. Okay. Yep, uh, let me Good. just make sure, yeah, I'm on the right uh, percentage zoom and everything for a both screens. Yeah, okay, so that's, so it's moved a little different. It looks, um, and then, yeah, okay. the font's definitely a little different. Okay, so the and we're on the we're on the production site now. Switch back to the preview site. Yep. Yeah, that's that's not a dramatic change. Okay, my eyes didn't see a dramatic change. That's um, subtle. Yeah, and I think I I feel as though I saw these being called out by Daniel. Okay, and place. and those were and and that's part of the change. So let's show a comparison between those two. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. And so this is how it currently looks on the production site. This is that how it different. looks. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And the, and the new look there is, is much better. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thank you. Yep. And, um, and my screen and just for the, for the reference is my screen's a much larger monitor than what Behan's using. So my nav bar, I don't think is going to have the same issues as far as appearing and rendering goes. Um, but right. I know that that was something that came up um, in the conversation of the original pull request and is part of the original pull request. So there was something there for sure. Okay. All right. So it, it feels to me like, at least as the group of the four of us here, we're okay with pressing forward. Uh, I'll probably yes. have a conversation with Daniel separately and, and see, okay, it may, it, he may disagree strongly with it. I tend to trust Daniel's judgment. He's very smart and very capable. And so I, I need to have that conversation with him, but, but it feels like we want to press forward. I'll check it also in Asia office hours later today to see, see what people's sense of it is. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks very yeah. much. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Um, so, uh, next thing on the list is just a quick update. So the blue ocean stat, we've up I've updated the blue ocean docs pages with a blue ocean status message. Uh, this is to properly set expectations for blue ocean, where it's at, where it's going to be, uh, and just overall the product itself. Um, uh, it's been included on every blue ocean document page, including the index and is, uh, Thanks to my working with Mark, we've made sure to place it above a fold so that it doesn't uh, hot, hot, get hidden when you go to any of the pages. Uh, now, the nice thing is with the status, it's also been updated to include conditional statements so that depending on what page is being viewed, uh, you'll get different versions of the status update uh, in the statement. So uh, it's, and it's all based on what uh, functions of Blue Ocean are being discussed. So here in creating a pipeline, it talks about all three pieces of it, Blue Ocean itself, the overall pipeline visualization, and uh, the pipeline snippet generator, uh, syntax snippet generator. So, uh, but if we go to something like the dashboard, uh, we're not gonna get those things. Pipeline visualization isn't necessarily a part of this. Uh, same thing with the activity view, but we're going to the pipeline editor and we see the pipeline syntax snippet generator piece here as well. Uh, so it's been implemented really nicely uh, and everything's been aligned in that sense. So uh, hopefully this helps relieve a lot of the concern with the Blue Ocean documentations These ha that has come up. Uh, and I'm still working on the Blue Ocean documentation overall to get these pages more in line with the status statement. Um, I've submitted a couple, but I still have uh, plenty of work to do on these. So 
that's coming down the pipeline as well. Um, Mark, is there any other, would you like to make any other comments or insight on that? No, or, I, I was, well, I take it back. Yes, one item. I was mm -hmm. proud to see a developer in the community quoting from the page in a mention, in an answer to a bug report on JIRA. Somebody had submitted an enhancement request, hey, give me this in Blue Ocean. And mm -hmm. the, the responder said, appreciate, thank you for the response. Refer to our comment on Blue Ocean. It won't, it is not likely to be implemented unless you implement it. <laughs> awesome, already getting some traction with it. That's fantastic news. Right, so that, that was very, very encouraging. Awesome. I mean, that some people are reading the documentation and remembering what's written inside. That's amazing. Well, I know it's good news. completely unexpected, completely and totally unexpected. Absolutely. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, yeah. And then, so, um, Mark, do you want to touch base on these search improvements for Jenkins.io uh, item? Yeah. So just to give a, give a, a brief status update, we use DocuSearch by Algolia. And DocuSearch by Algolia has been through an upgrade recently, and we haven't adapted to the upgrade. And as such, our search quality has gone down. So, so when I'm searching for something in using the search field on Jenkins.io, uh, it sometimes gives me much worse results than it used to. And that's because we need to do this upgrade. But I, as far as I can tell, it needs to be either me or Gavin Mogan that do it because it's a privileged operation that has to be done to configure the Algolia site that does the search engine generation for us. So it's it's something we have to access. It's not something just anybody can do. So I guess, Kevin, we probably ought to put it on my action item list. Uh, or it's it's already there. It's in the GitHub issue at the very bottom. So no yeah. need. That's yeah. great. OK. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and I and I want to be able to. I'll help whatever I can do to like add any documentation in, or if there needs to be new things added to make sure the search results are hitting. More than happy to step in and take care of all that. You know. Okay. Uh, so uh, the next base LTS baseline uh, is going to require Java 11 for the September base. The September LTS uh, baseline is likely going to be 2.361. Uh, there has been a thread started in the Jenkins developers group. Uh, so that's there. Uh, and we have there, there's already conversation going around that. Um, the next LTS is also going to support Java 17. So that'll be a new thing coming out that people will want to uh, be aware of and find out. Uh, the uh, upgrade guide and change log content creation and gathering will start. Uh, soon enough, since that will be part of my ongoing work for the next LTS. Uh, and as soon as those uh, requests start coming in, and we'll start putting that together. Uh, one of the other things that's come up recently in our Docs Office Hours is the commercial support page idea that Gavin Mogan's proposed. Uh, the idea is that uh, we have an updated version of our support site because right now our commercial support site's uh, out of date and it doesn't offer very many uh, relevant items. Uh, so there's been a lot of discussion between uh, members of the community, Gavin, Mark, myself, Daniel Beck, uh, and lots of others that we want to figure out what's the best way to go about implementing this page, what kind of information we can put on this page, what things are going to be helpful, what extra items that we might be able to include on the page. Um, there's been mentions of cloud uh, services since it might not be a direct vendor, but it's something we work with. So there's a lot that can be applied here. Um, the idea, and obviously we want as much community involvement and feedback as possible. Uh, this is something that's gonna be beneficial to the community as a whole. So it only makes more sense to have uh, as much input on it as possible. Um, it's definitely still a work in progress. This is not something that's gonna be finished up in the next you know, week or two, um, but as long as we can keep pushing forward on it and getting better feedback and more info, uh, we can continue to build that vendor site and, and make sure that it looks great and then it has uh, things like direct links to cut to support uh, and other really helpful, useful, necessary items that just are missing right now. Uh, does anyone have any other comments or feedback on the commercial support vendors idea? Anything? I mean, the, the ticket is linked uh, here in the agenda, so it's always accessible. I can post it in the Gitter channel as well afterwards so that it's readily uh, visible. But yeah. 
Okay. Uh, and then, uh, Mark, do you want to just touch base on change log entries for multiple repositories items? items? Yeah, I, I haven't done the ask to the developer list yet. Um, okay. It's, I think what we want to do is I'm going to create a ticket in the, in the, uh, the backlog somewhere that says, hey, extend it for this. It's still, the, the idea is still somewhat nebulous. It's infrequent enough that I'm not sure we want to do it always. And the, the, the interface is complicated. It's easy when you see a change in Jenkins core, you know which version it's associated with because it's always bracketed by a tag. Um, however, with the packaging, you don't know that. We don't tag the packaging. We don't tag other tooling with Jenkins specific release version tags. And so the whole, what would we say and how would we say it is not as clear to me. Right. Yeah, makes sense. And uh, that actually kind of leads into the next item on our list, the 2.346.3 change log and upgrade guide itself. Um, so that's been opened up and ready to go. That's been added to the LTS checklist uh, that is currently open for 2.346.3. Um, uh, we've had a couple of backports get pushed through and approved in the last week or two, and those have all been added as well. So it's now got everything, it should have everything ready to go for the release next week. Um, and there were updates from a few different places, such as Jenkins Core, uh, and then uh, the remoting update came through. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely a chance that multiple change log entries can come from multiple places, but uh, as long as we can get them into one place, that shouldn't take care of everything. Um, and then lastly, Mark, do you want to just briefly touch on the tooling updates for Java 11? Yeah, so uh, while Vihan is here, Vihan, mm -hmm. as far as I understand it, the pipeline steps doc generator is now running with Java 11. Is that your understanding as well, or have I misunderstood? Uh, no, it's still on 8, actually. So oh, it is. Changed for BMU. We changed for the metadata utils, it's on 11, but this one is still on 8. And I, it was one of the tasks on my to do list to get it to 11 as soon as possible. Okay, so Kevin, if you can update that, it's, it, there's not a, it's not a crisis that we must do it. It's just, um, just that it will be good for us to get there. And I'd, on that second line down, the extension indexer, so in the Jenkins documentation on Jenkins.io, there are these things called extension points and the extension points are extracted from the source code and, and as part of the fixing finding and fixing a bug in jenkins 2.361 i realized that that extension indexer is badly out of date whereas vihan's work has already updated the pipeline steps doc generator to use modern tooling this extension indexer is well, it didn't even compile with Java 11. It was that out of date. So, so at least now with this change, it compiles with Java 11. However, there are, there are a whole bunch of failures that need to be analyzed to see, is that a safe change given the current state of the code base? And if not, what could we do to make it more modern and still be safe? And I don't know when I'll get to that. It, I started it because it was of interest, but I'm not sure I'm going to finish it because I'm not persuaded that that I can take the time to do the analysis yet. So this is one where if somebody wants to do a little bit of Java coding, they're welcome to. And that's okay. it for me. Great. Thank you very much, Mark. Are there any other items, topics, or points that anyone wants to bring up before we uh, end the recording for this session? Uh, yes, there was one thing that I wanted to add. Um, uh, that was like, uh, do we need to make changes to the POM, uh, the Jenkins version and the POM mark for the pipeline steps documentation to see the new change? Uh, the newer version, do we have to manually add it? Uh, I'm so I, I don't know for sure. I think that in order, so what the pipeline steps doc generator right now does is every week it receives a new dependabot. Uh, generated pull request that offers to upgrade its dependency from last weekly to current weekly. But I don't know if that's right. that's what you're asking. Is that the question you're asking or are you, were you asking something different? 
Um, yes, so basically I want to say that uh, once we want to uh, run the job again for the self documentation, uh, will we need to upgrade the Jenkins version that it uses? So currently I'm, I'm seeing 2.360. Uh, uh, so so uh, will we need to update that? Is this still the buggy version is what I'm asking? Ah, okay. And, and that part I thought that so so let me let me go check that so uh, kevin i'm going to give you a a url in the chat if you can open it that way we're all looking at the same thing together so if you can open up that url that i just put in the chat okay so this is the pipeline steps doc generator and kevin if you'll pick one of those pull requests 196 or yeah so now click the github link there on the left hand side of the page Click that GitHub link and let's see what it. Yeah. Okay. So this one updated us two days ago from 361 to 362. And, and that's happening pretty regularly. However, that was two days and one hour ago. And the last run on the. Yeah. So, so I, I suspect we're going to find that rerunning it won't help. And now I'm, I'm just going to launch it to try. Right. This is the doubt that I had. That because, perhaps, oh, go ahead. The older version is still not changed. <laughs> right. So, so the, if I can't tell for sure, well, I guess I can tell it's easy to analyze. So it, the last job ran on my clock at 11.22 a.m. on the 2nd of August. And the pull request last merge was 11.05. So the master branch ran after it. So I would expect that the, the job that I just started on the master branch is not going to do anything different than we already have. But it's an easy thing to check. And if they are not different, I'll submit the ticket and then Vihan will ask you to take a look at it. Does that work so okay for you, Vihan? Can, right. So what is the latest version that will not give us, uh, that is that does not have the bugs? The, the, the latest version is 2.362 and it resolved the problem. So the, the root problem that I saw in the backend extension index generator was that the source code mm -hmm. was not available for Jenkins 2.361 in the Maven repository archive. Uh, and because the source, source code was not available, uh, it failed to do the generation. We fixed that in time for 2.362. So the source code is available for 2.362 in the repository. And if that had been at the root of this change to, to map things to Jenkins core, then that would be fixed. But I, I, I'm not sure that that's at the root of it. So now it's maybe the best answer is, Vihan, could you paste a link to that page that's broken into our notes? It was, it, I think it was the checkout page. Is that right? Um, that was the Jenkins core. Uh, I'll just add it uh, just a second. Okay. So Should I add it here? Ah, okay. okay. I see it. Yeah, that's okay. That's great. So, and I, and now I can see it as well. Okay. So on that, it has the SCM object. Okay. But what you, the, the break, that's not the SCM object, I think is reasonable. But when you search for checkout, it no longer shows Git SCM, right? So Kevin, um, if you'll if you'll it shows it shows so it's there the, uh, the the problem is it should be present in the pipe and SCM step plugin and not code so it's not able to find its parent right it's so so Kevin click pipeline steps reference on the left hand side mm -hmm. and in the filter type the word checkout mm -hmm. and my recollection behind was that. On this one, there would be a fourth entry, which was for Git SCM or for the Git plugin. 
and that fourth entry for the Git plugin is missing. Did I, or, or for something, there was, there was something that there's a fourth entry here that's no longer there that in the last time we demonstrated this two or three weeks ago, there was another entry here that was better than that Jenkins core thing. Right, right, that is correct. There were there were four matchings for checkout. I think that is that's correct. Okay, so so that's the regression. Is is this thing that says Jenkins core isn't actually helping us, as or at least it's it seems to have broken many other things. We need to be get back to what we were previously. Great, thank you. So. Because that job on ci.jenkins.io has a history, we can actually look at the old generations and see when the change happened. Right. And Good. I think what All I right. can do is I can refer to the logs of uh, the the build that ran after the dependent bot pull request. So one that we saw, the latest one. So maybe some things in the logs that can help us. Ah, very good. Okay, super. All right, so thanks very much. That that covered all the topics I had with that one. Thanks, Kevin, for letting us take that time. Yeah, thank you for creating such a wonderful discussion around all these things. It's nice to have for posterity. And with that, now, uh, does anyone else have anything else to add? Or, uh, okay, we are a little over time, so I'd like to respect everyone's day and give uh, that time back to them. Uh, the video, uh, we're going to stop the video and it'll be available in the next